the International Space Station finally operating at its peak after almost 25 years is now projected to be cut, hobbled by proposed cuts by President Trump's administration. Two reports are coming out today saying that not only will the ISS be facing a shortfall already existing in its current budgets, but also President Trump's proposed budget for the International Space Station would cut the number of astronauts on board, will cut the amount of science that can be conducted on the International Space Station, and will really decrease the efficiency of the International Space Station just a few years before it's due to be retired in 2030. If you do not know what the president's budget proposal for FY 2026 is, I did a whole video on that recently. You can check out what the breakdown is. One of those items was the budget reduces the space station's crew size and onboard research, preparing for a safe decommissioning of the station by 2030 and replacement by commercial space station. And they don't really get into the commercial space station plans, whether or not they're going to fund those at an increased rate at a current, the current rate or, or whatever. We don't know what that would look like in terms of a potential gap in low earth orbit access. But what I wanna focus on today is what we do know about the International Space Station and how it is operating right now. The Houston Chronicle came out with an article today and all articles are linked below in the description. They are stating that there is a $1 billion shortfall from existing approved budgets for the International Space Station through 2029, through pretty much the end of its program. Additionally, Ars Technica came out with an article today breaking down what the proposed budget would do to the International National Space Station if it comes to pass. Now I have to admit up front, I am really biased about this subject. My first full-time job was working on International Space Station research, really focusing on the science that can be conducted and is being conducted on the ISS. In addition to this $1 billion shortfall through 2029, this proposed budget by the Trump administration, if it does get approved by Congress, would save an approximate $508 million. One of the ways that NASA is looking to handle this lack of funding is to cut the crew size, specifically going down from four at a time to three at a time. And remember that NASA often flies with partners, with international partners. There's a crew exchange with Roscosmos, the Russian space agency. So there are Roscosmos cosmonauts that fly along with NASA astronauts on Crew Dragon, in addition to other international partners from Canada, Japan, uh, European Space Agency, all the international partners that contribute to the ISS they do fly their astronauts with NASA or with Russia. Cutting down that size, that crew size from four to three, and remember Crew Dragon was actually designed for seven, so cutting it down from its existing four to three really does cut down on the number of people that fly, which cuts down on the amount of maintenance that can be done, which cuts down on the amount of science that can be done. And that science there, that's the key that I wanna talk about because that is the key to the entire International Space Station. The Houston Chronicle article cited an email by the ISS program manager Dana Weigel. I apologize if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. She said that that could cut NASA's science by half. The Ars Technica article said a third. But those are significant cuts, whether it's a half or a third, that's a huge, huge bite out of the science that is being conducted on the International Space Station. Additionally, some proposals are to extend the expeditions. Right now, NASA does six month expeditions, extending that to eight months. And that's sort of what Roscosmos does. It has a longer time span with its expeditions. Um, so I actually don't think that's a bad idea. I think that's a pretty good idea. Um, but I'm more concerned about what those people do while on board and not necessarily how long they're on board for. Now these changes would take place next year for crew 12. That's currently scheduled for February of next year. We'll see if that happens. I mean, these generally do happen every six months right now. So crew 12 is when this would take effect. Ars Technica is also reporting that it would be a cancellation to all upgrades to the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, which is a very large, very impressive instrument on the International Space Station. And we don't know what other science it would affect, but it would probably affect pretty much every bit of science that is ongoing or future science conducted on the ISS. Now, this might sound familiar to you. It sounded familiar to me because this is not at all the first time that the ISS has been targeted because of budget shortfalls in general, and therefore science would be affected. For example, in the FY 2007 budget request by George W. Bush, it was estimated that there would be a cut, which in today's money is roughly 155 or so million dollars. The FY 2009 budget proposals under the first Trump administration did talk about ending NASA support, ending all US government support for the International Space Station in 2025 this year, and it's transitioning 100% to commercial industry. Now, of course, I can't even imagine a universe where that would be possible. Um, the ISS is extremely expensive. It was never 
meant to be cost effective. And so we don't see commercial industry jumping to take over the ISS at this point. I know this is a, a alternative proposal instead of deorbiting ISS that commercial industry could take it over, but no commercial industry has volunteered to do this. Nobody is raising their hands saying, I can afford to do this and I think I'm gonna get a profit out of the ISS. So uh, unfortunately, <laughs> that's the way it is right now and that's the way it was back in 2018 when the first Trump administration proposed just completely cutting off all funding for ISS in 2025. Now, of course, that didn't happen either. However, later in 2019, we did see a report come out by the NASA Office of Inspector General, OIG. NASA OIG 2019 report on NASA's top management and performance challenges. And this actually didn't have to do with budget cuts directly. It had more to do with insufficient budgeting over time, specifically for the commercial crew program, which had not been fully funded in the years prior. And therefore, there was this large gap and of course, it's not entirely the fault of NASA, it's also the fault of the providers. Uh, there was a large gap between when the space shuttle program ended in 2011 and when SpaceX was able to launch two people to the International Space Station for Demo 2 in May of 2020. And of course, we have this huge gap with Starliner, which I'm not gonna go into in this video. I have a separate video. I've got multiple videos on Starliner. You can watch one of them here. Uh, but that is also an existing gap where we still haven't had Starliner come on board. But this OIG report was specifically talking about if NASA has to continue to rely on Russia to send astronauts up to the ISS, then there's a real deficit in the crew that can be on ISS. And therefore, there's a deficit of science that can be done on the ISS. I actually remember this really well. There were worries that there would be a skeleton crew on the ISS in 2019, 2020, and that very little would be done in those years and the ISS would just kind of shrink to nothing. And instead, what we saw was the opposite because SpaceX Crew Dragon ended up being so successful that it is the workhorse. It is so successful. It is bringing not only NASA missions to the ISS, and we're up to Crew 11 is next come July or so. It's also bringing private industry. It's bringing Axiom missions to the ISS. So there's been so much development in crew that actually NASA said in 2023 that they are at maximum capacity. They are utilizing the ISS after 22 years of the ISS existing. Finally, in 2023, they were maximizing the capabilities and utility of the ISS in terms of the science. The major limitation is crew time. If you want to do science in space and it, it's not all automated, you you need the crew to do something, whether it's completely being involved in the science or starting something or checking on something or even unloading something and putting it somewhere else. You need people to do that, especially trained people who are in situ who can do that science. And in fact, one of the ways that NASA talked about extending the science or, or improving the science would be to do more in situ, to do more science analysis on the space station rather than waiting to send samples back to Earth. NASA in 2023 also talked about the availability of future cargo and crew vehicles that could maximize the ISS even more. They were talking about specifically Sierra Space's Dream Chaser, which is quite delayed. It is currently targeted to launch the first Dream Chaser uncrewed in Q3 of this year. Who knows when they would be available to start launching crew to the ISS, maybe not well, ISS is even up there still, but we can cross our fingers and hope. Um, they mentioned, of course, Boeing Starliner, which is having its issues, and we don't know if Boeing Starliner is actually going to fly again this year. Um, I think they're actually now targeting next year, and we don't know whether that's going to be uncrewed or a demo flight or, or a fully utilized mission. And they also mentioned the Japanese HTV-X, which is currently slated for no earlier than August of this year to launch, and that's an uncrewed vehicle. So bringing up more cargo, to support the science, to support the astronauts, and also more crew to do more of the science is what's needed to maximize the ISS beyond what it currently is at its current peak. So in 2023, NASA was saying that not only is ISS doing the best work it has ever done in its entire lifetime, but it could do more. It still has lots of life in it if we continue to do these science missions, if we continue to bring crew on board. One caveat to these remarks by NASA in 2023 is that they were specifically talking about the NASA allocations. There is a separate allocation by my former employer, Center for the Advancement of Science in Space, CASIS, which goes by the name ISS National Laboratory. That is a nonprofit that helps NASA to utilize its space and resources for the benefit of life on Earth. And 
And in 2022, I know that there was a report put out that CASIS was not fully utilizing what it had been given by NASA for the ISS. Um, but I think that's actually improved since then. I couldn't find a report saying so, but I think they're closer now to maximizing its potential. So NASA is maximizing its potential. CASIS is maximizing its potential. I don't know about the Russian side. I don't know about the Japanese. I don't know about the Europeans, but my guess is that ISS is a pretty happening place right now. You might fundamentally disagree that the ISS should even exist, and that is fine. You might think it's just a waste of time to go around in circles around Earth, and that is fine if you believe that, but the point is it already does exist. It's up there. We've spent all this money, all this time to make it such a great asset. Shouldn't we use it while it's there? You might also disagree that we should be spending any money at all on things like this because of the national debt, and that's fine. But again, it's already up there. It's penny wise and pound foolish to think that by cutting $500 million estimated out of the budget that that's going to do something good for our economy or for our national debt or for anything um, because that's such a little teeny tiny bit of money in the grand scheme of things and it'll also increase the expenses over time. And here's where we can fall into the sunk cost fallacy where we're saying that we spent all this money on the ISS so why, why would we cancel it now? But remember that the ISS does have a finite lifetime. It is going to be canceled in 2030. I don't think there is an appetite at this point extending ISS past 2030. That had been talked about in order to eliminate any kind of gap between the ISS ending and commercial space stations coming on board, you know, becoming operational. I think at this point under this administration, it's unlikely that the ISS would be extended past 2030, but we do have an end date. Even if you think it should be canceled, well, it is being canceled and it's what we do with it while we still have it that matters. The presumed future NASA administrator, Jared Isaacman, during his Senate confirmation hearing recently, did state that he thinks that we should maximize the ISS to its fullest potential. And Senator, as I mentioned in my prepared remarks, I think we need to use up every bit of life that's remaining on the International Space Station so we can crack the code on the space economy and better hand off those responsibilities to, to commercial industry. I fully agree with him. I suspect that the Senate and the House of Representatives will also agree with him because in the end, it's actually Congress that decides how much money NASA is given for the International Space Station. And I have a feeling that we're gonna see Congress push back on any kind of hobbling of the International Space Station before it's time. So if you think the International Space Station is important and should be funded to maximize its potential while it still exists, then I want you, if you're a US citizen, to contact your elected representatives and tell them so. And there is more that Congress can do to push back against these proposed cuts in the Trump administration's budget proposal. I have a whole video on that. You can watch it next.